students. <clears throat> this will start the uh, week number four class. It's the 6th of October, 2020. No students have joined me yet.
Leucotheria. Who's coming in? Ali and Kurt are joining us. Dan's telephone line. Oh. Dan, well, I think this will be an easier lesson than last week. Um, about half of you did well on the sandbox and the other half had trouble. And uh, I made myself a note to sign an easier homework next time because moving those triangular pieces in the position were, were pretty tricky without maybe drawing some extra lines so you can O-snap to them. As I recall, the uh, perpendicular O-snap doesn't work on the edge of a solid, which kind of surprised me. But today we're going to learn um, the revolve command and the um, intersect command. Intersect, I'll have to admit, I've never heard of a uh, professional uh, CAD work that required the intersect command. But I want you to at least be aware that it exists. We'll be building this, uh, this little coffee table, whatever you call it. Years ago, I had a exercise that had the, where we made a salad fork. So instead of two solids, two identical solids overlapping each other, we had, I had students make a top view of a fork and a side view of a fork, merge them together, and the intersect would result in a salad, uh, in kind of a fancy salad fork. I don't know why I stopped using that. And I assume by now everybody's got the textbook or the book of exercises. Just in case I, I got, what is this? Exercise 23 here. And uh, once we get all assembled, we'll our goal is to, to make, is to, to get a closed polyline that is exactly half of this lathed item. And uh, so I'll walk you through um, building enough of this um, exercise that we can trace around it with uh, endpoint object snaps. 
Now later on, we'll um, Ali is joining us. Later on, we'll get into some uh, problems that have fillets. And I guess just just the uh, just eighty seven is of the assignments and has has fillets all over the place. So for that profile, you know you can't go endpoint to endpoint with all those arcs in the profile. So uh, that'd be a meaning a little extra work to trim it down to nothing but lines and arcs and p at it join all the lines and arcs into a uh, closed polyline and spin it for the profile. Several of these I um, didn't realize at the, at the time, but they, they require some pieces, you know, multiple pieces to be um, be made and then some of them 3D rotated and then over, you know, superimposed the uh, solids together, sometimes move them up or down the Z axis. And uh, so it's a few more steps when the, uh, you know, when you got the uh, little notch taken out or um, in this case, we got to revolve two things and offset the small cylinder. So you can't uh, make the entire um, number 71 exercise in a single revolve process. Oh, okay. So after 415, who all I got? I got myself and eight participants. And somebody coming in, I think that's Alexander with a cell phone. Nine. <laughs> so again, uh, the um, last week's homework was a bit more difficult than I, than I expected. And about half did it very, very well. And the other half had trouble with the... Um, solids either overlapping, superimposing on each other, or the, the solids not being O-snapped tightly into the corner. And I made a note that next time I teach intermediate, I'll pick an easier lumber project for, for that week's homework assignment. Um, again, uh, this week's material is the is the revolve command, and we'll spend a little bit of time on the intersect command to make a um, you know the, how to put the superimposed two solids together and uh, change all the volume that is shared by both solids into a separate solid make this uh, little table here. I don't know that we'll fully complete it or not. Anyway, let's uh, let's go back to the page one of handout. What was that? Page 4-1. And uh, our mission right now is to draw the, to get a polyline that is exactly half of this spinning topper camshaft, blank, whatever. Um, I, again, I hope everybody's got the um, book of exercises by now, but more for my convenience, I, I uh, brought up a page of the uh, exercise 23 just to follow the directions. So let me start a brand new assignment or a blank brand new drawing, click new, use our usual ACAD.DWT template. As usual, turn off the grid and this transparency or annotation. And I still haven't figured out why those two insist on being turned on. 
Um, all them, when you start from scratch drawing, all I got is layer zero. So I'll, and I'll draw my uh, garbage or uh, sketch lines in layer zero and then trace with a, uh, a closed poly line on say a solid or um, layer. Um, this one I suggest we uh, draw a vertical line that has an endpoint at, at each change in diameter. Disregard the, the hole through the middle, though it's um, not hard to add. I'll probably add it just for demonstration. So we'll start at the top and come down 32, then 30, then 6, 14, all the way down to the bottom. Then, uh, draw lines off to the right, equal to the diameter of the segment just below. So we'll have a bunch of lines off to the right. One by one, we'll move the lines by their midpoint to the um, vertical line. So they'll you know, be, be placed correctly and then connect the dots um, using uh, OSNAP, uh, OSNAP tracking. This must be the uh, topic that uh, made me bring back object snap tracking because it's much, much easier to make the profile um, taking advantage of object snap tracking. So let's start with the line command. We'll start at the top here, pull her straight down 32. Polar, continue down 30, continue down six, looks like I'm gonna have to regen and that's okay. I'll finish the line, double click to do a zoom extents and zoom out again, and continue where we left off. Let's see, that was a six unit segment, right? Continue down to another 14, 46, and 36. So we got all these different line segments. And as we come down, we can home in on the endpoints. Later on, we'll use midpoint, so I won't turn it off. We want to home in on all the green squares for the endpoints of all these targets. And again, let's uh, draw the line equal to the diameter off to the right. After we get all of those and copy a couple, we'll move them so the midpoint of the diameter line is is on the end point of the vertical skeleton or framework. So continuing on, starting at the top, let's see, this is 16 across the top. So I'll draw a line starting there and send it 16 to the right. Next one down is 32. So we'll come down to the next um, endpoint, draw 32, enter, enter to finish, enter to begin. The next one, uh, the, the uh, diameter drops from 32 down to 28. But again, we're, take, we're marking the diameters of the cylinder below the uh, construction line or the guideline we're drawing. So this one will be 28. Enter to finish, enter to begin. There's at the bottom of the six unit drop. This guy is a hundred units diameter. Enter to finish, enter to begin. Come down to the next object snap. We're transitioning to a smaller diameter. Dimensions shown at the bottom there, 40 units. So with polar tracking and a steady hand, I'll try type 40 and hit enter. Enter to finish, enter to begin. 
you got uh, another transition to a smaller diameter. That is 15 units. So I'll come down to the end point, draw 15 units, enter to uh, put a segment, enter to finish. Now we'll move each one by its end point so it's perfectly balanced or centered uh, on this vertical tree of endpoints. I'll hit enter again to, to invoke the move command, select one, hit enter, oh, snap it on the midpoint, come over to the uh, intersection of the endpoint. Enter again to invoke the last used command, select the, the diameter line, slide it over. Might be a quicker way to do this. Now, in some cases, like this diameter is is over is superimposed on here, so there's no really no need to to copy this down with object snap tracking. You know, just uh, you know, keep a keep an eye on this little camshaft whatever thing. We'll draw a line starting at, at here, come down, enter, enter. Now watch this. From end point, I'm going to, oh, I lost my acquire. Rest my cursor so I get the tiny little green plus sign. Come down, rest my cursor so I get the tiny little plus sign. Come over where the two dotted lines intersect and then slide over to the end point and come straight down to the intersection. So finding this point right here is easy with object snap tracking turned on. That's the status bar button to the left of the running object snap button. Little reminder, we got um, polar tracking set for 45. That comes in handy to mirror some circles in, in later exercises. And we got the, uh, the usual Bergner's five favorite object snaps running on the uh, O snap button on the status bar. Continuing on, here's another one. We'll acquire the point. There's the plus sign. Rest for a second. That one's acquired. So now we can find the intersection where the two Acquired point guidelines uh, line up. Come over back to the end point. And okay, it's still acquired. It's if, I believe if the point goes off the screen while you're panning, it'll unacquire. Just rest your cursor on it again to acquire it. Acquire this one, line them up, come back, line them up, come back. That one there, I forgot. So we could trim away everything. And, uh, P edit join what's left after trimming into a single closed polyline and spin it about this vertical axis here, like you're on a potter's wheel or on a wood lathe. But um, just in case, you know, sometimes we might want to save this, this sketch, like to place the, um, the hole right here in the middle of the camshaft. So instead of trimming and p-edit joining. I'm going to create a new layer called solid. Object or 3D object might be a better choice. Set this layer current, assign it a color. I've been using blue for this exercise. Click OK. Solid layers created, blue, it's current. Close the layer properties dialog box. Now with polyline, 
we can just go from uh, point to point, walking our way. Again, this, this exercise has no arcs in the profile, so it's pretty easy. I could assign a, a uh, width to the polyline so it shows up a little better. Now I'll hit C, enter for close to uh, close it back up there. Or better yet, click on the uh, polyline, uh, the uh, option on the command line, or right click and select the option. So we now have a closed polyline. Usually, uh, and, uh, most often, AutoCAD, when you're selecting something, the newest object is the one that'll get grabbed. I think there's a few exceptions to that. But um, if, um, if you're having trouble and there's no, no harm in freezing the zero layer to get all that stuff out of the way, just for good housekeeping, I'll move everything into, into the uh, positive, positive quadrant. We've got the closed polyline, right click, click properties, and it's, it's a polyline, and where does it say closed? Closed, yes. And we'll turn off the properties, hit escape to deselect. We'll turn. We'll go to the. I, I found we uh, a couple times. I had to toggle back and forth between our two workspaces. The uh, revolve and extrude commands are on the three D modeling workspace. Uh, however, dimensioning, if if we need to go there, I won't require it for the homework. But dimensioning is easier on the drafting and annotation workspace. So I'll change over to the 3D modeling workspace. Again, with, uh, with a right click in the correct location, you can get the workspace drop down list uh, up here at the end of the, um, what's this called? Quick menu, I believe. Anyway, let's uh, drop down the extrude uh, flyout. There's the revolve command. If you're quick with a keyboard, the, just type the first four letters and it you know, auto corrects to the revolve command. So with nothing selected and nothing on the command prompt, I'll click the res revolve icon. Command prompt says select the objects to revolve, click anywhere on this closed polyline and hit enter. Next step is specify start point for the uh, middle of the potter's wheel or the uh, axis of the wood lathe. Any two points along um, this line or polar track up and down are as good as another. So I'll click one, I'll polar track straight up and that'll define the axis that we're spinning this thing about on the potter's wheel or wood lathe. Last question is uh, how far you want to spin it. Some exercises might be just 180 degrees. Let's accept the default for this assignment, 360 degrees by hitting enter. So far so good. Let's do a 3D free orbit to get the warm and fuzzy. Let's uh, get out of 3D free orbit and change the visual style to get more confidence that we've created it correctly. With conceptual visual style, we can spin it around. And see, we got that little narrow notch in there. And don't forget, um, hit escape or right click and pick exit to 
get out of 3D free orbit, don't forget X-ray. That's kind of a handy um, visual style. Um, although a lot of times we'll go back to 2D wireframes so we can O snap on points in the, in the back of the object. Let me square this thing off again. We'll go to the home for the uh, view cube here. I'm going to type plan, enter, click top. Now let's continue on and drill the hole through here. That might be a good. Uh, Good opportunity to, 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 to bring back the zero layer that we drew all those guidelines on. What happened? Oh, that's right. The zero layer was frozen when I moved the uh, profile into the positive positive quadrant. Not a problem. We'll uh, shift it a hair. I want to O snap at the center of this and draw a construct a guideline straight up to the center of the circle. And by the way, object snap tracking uh, relieves you of erasing your guidelines. Let me show you how to do that. I'll just exit or escape out of the 3D free orbit. I'll go back to circle. Our assignment has it listed by diameter. So yeah, let's drop down and use the center diameter icon instead of typing in options. Well, check it out. I'll acquire this point and I can polar track exactly 20 units out the green tracking line. So the circle is now started exactly 20 units in the Y direction of that uh, center of the revolved object. This uh, hole is 24 units diameter. Rats uh, still on diameter. What happened? Radius of 12. Oh, uh, my bad. I put it 20 units from the bottom. It should have been 20 units uh, from the center of, of this ring. Not a problem. I'll grab it, move it to the center of this ring. And move it again, carefully going up the um, Y axis. That's why I suggest you, you avoid those isometric views because quite often the Y axis looks exactly like the Z axis. So I'll move a 20 units up the Y axis. And you get a warm and fuzzy that things are looking the way they should. Yep, that circle is on the XY plane. I'll extrude this circle. Just occurred to me, me perhaps the cylinder option would have saved me a step. I'll, I'll uh, drop down the um, fly out toolbar to extrude or type the first four letters. The extrude command asks, select the objects to extrude. I'll select that circle and hit enter. Now it asks, specify the height. Well, all, all it needs to be is greater 
than the diameter that we're drilling through. So I could just rubber band with my cursor some ridiculous length. But check it out. It, it only goes halfway through the solid object now. We started it on the XY plane and uh, extruded it some, I don't know, two or 300 units in the Z direction. I'm starting to get lost in space here. So let's, let's go back to, to the, um, home on the view cube top. And let's move this guy downward, say 30 units. So, it, so the cylinder penetrates both quadrants of this uh, 40 unit diameter cylinder. And there's a few ways you can move it in the negative Z direction, a few quadrants. Probably the more fun way is to All right, and then with a loss on why the, the thing extruded in the negative direction. I was expecting it to extrude in the positive Z direction. Hey, Paul, it's Dan. Yes, Dan. I, it seems like pull is a, is a great tool to use at this point. How's that? Press pull? Oh, yes. Uh, uh, you haven't quite gotten up to speed yet with press pull, but uh, you're right. You can grab a surface and um, and uh, you know literally pull the surface out. We'll go back to 3D wireframe. This is the press pull command. I can't remember when that came out in AutoCAD, but. Um, Trying to remember. Anyway, three you know, AutoCAD got pretty good at 3D in uh, back in the late 90s. We'll click the press pull icon. Now, hopefully, we can latch on to the surface of the cylinder here. I found sometimes it it's, gets confused. It it doesn't understand which surface I'm selecting. I guess on, on the curved side of a cylinder, it's, it's a little easier, but if we had a cylinder inside a cylinder inside a cylinder, you know, and you click right here in the middle of all these cylinders, you know, which, which one of the three? So let, let's click in the open space here, go up in the Z direction and click again. And that just stretch the solid so it penetrates this camshaft thing. Now we're back to the subtract command that I forgot to demonstrate in, in week number two, but you needed it to do the week number two homework assignment. I'll take a hit for that. The subtract command is the middle of the three lunar eclipse icons here. In a minute, we'll be using the, the bottom one, the intersect lunar eclipse icon. Again, we'll use the subtract command. Click on the subtract icon or type in some letters. Oh, okay, I'm unable to, I should have my command area with three lines visible because one of these lines says, select the solid object you want to remove stuff from. In other words, select the big object. Might be intuitive to select the small one, but AutoCAD is expecting you to select the big object from which you will subtract. So I'll collect, I'll select the revolve command here and hit enter. Now it says select the solids to subtract. 
one or more small object. Select that and hit enter. Change to a spray painted visual style and admire your work. Um, this object center 72 is probably easier done with just a bunch of cylinders stacked on top of each other. You'll draw a cylinder for the bottom and copy it so far up and make a cylinder that for the spool in the middle. Uh, make six cylinders all the way around. I'm not sure if you could array them. I don't, I kind of doubt if you arrayed the cylinders to get six that you could subtract from the large uh, short pipe section double flanged uh, spacer here. Uh, I doubt you could subtract an array. So if you use the array to make the six cylinders, explode the array and so and select all four of them if they're plenty long enough you can just draw a crossing window and select the top of the six cylinders anybody got any question anything i lost you with i won't collect these but I'm hoping you y'all were able to keep up. It's Dan. I have a question. Yes, Dan. When you go to 3D orbit, how do you change the rotation point? Uh, well, that's always been a mystery. Over the years, AutoCAD is uh, a little more accurate at guessing where the rotation point should be. There is a, a D view command that I don't think anybody uses D, uh, dynamic view, but there's a target option in the D view command where you can O snap to specify the target. And from then on, that's the center of rotation for 3D free orbit. Um, you know, doing, uh, you know, doing a little uh, prep work before class, I found if you zoom all the way out, the um, AutoCAD has a better shot at selecting the um, center rotation point. I like the free orbit one instead of simple orbit. There, it appears that the center of rotation of the object is perfectly centered in the gerbil wheel. Thank you. But uh, you know, that, that question comes up, you know, periodically in these intermediate classes, and I'm at a loss on why there is not an option to the uh, 3D orbit and 3D free orbit commands that you can O snap to specify the center of rotation. Again, it's fairly good at guessing what you want. Now, if we had a bunch of 3D objects in, you know, miles into the background, it might, it might assume you want the center of rotation to be, you know, center of all these solid objects. So in that case, I'd suggest isolate your view so that just the object you're look you're interested in is on the display. Maybe freeze the layer of the other objects, or move them uh, move them to the side ten thousand units or whatever. You know, that would probably get AutoCAD to find a, a good center of rotation point as well. 
And then uh, this annoys me. For some reason, AutoCAD takes liberty of when I want to go to perspective view. Very rarely do I see any use for that. So I'm all the time manually changing the, the view here to the left of the visual styles. There's the visual styles drop down to the left of visual styles is the, uh, I guess, custom views. You know, these are similar to the corners of the view cube. Um, I think in week, is it next week or the week after? Pretty soon we get into storing views. Well, anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Um, again, I, I'm all the time changing it to the um, parallel. You know, so to each his own. Um, let's skip these other two on page 4-1. I did find another typo on the piston exercise 75, but your book fails to tell you the uh, depth of the O-ring or the piston ring groove. And I believe I found that from the completed, completed uh, DWG files that I think anybody can download. Which one is this, 76? I believe it's 29 is the diameter of the bottom of the uh, piston ring grooves. And getting this dome is a little tricky. Um, I don't think I ever taught this, but remember from the arc fly out, there's start and radius. Yeah. When you got the uh, 2D view of the piston ring, you can specify an arc that starts on the right side, ends on the left side, and has a um, specific radius that's in your textbook. Anyway, let's move on. Coming up five o'clock here. Okay, these I think are homework assignments. We'll decide, you know, one or you know, a couple to to do for homework. All right, Bergner. Why do I not have? Oh, I gotta scroll down instead of arrow to the right. Um, we're gonna make this uh, wooden table leg that ends up you know like this second graphic on the uh, page 4-3 and again um, I got from another instructor that a sim uh, an exercise where we'd make a salad fork you draw the top view of a fork and the side view of the fork and rotate 3d them so that they in the uh, coincide and they're the uh, volume that is that is included in both solids is all that's uh, that is the result of the intersect command. Anyway, some dimensions are missing on this, um, like the length from here to the uh, slight bend. And I think I concluded that that I randomly picked uh, close to a an inch and five eighths diameter for these circles. So it, it would be nice if you had three or four, you know, a nice round number of this flat surface. Uh, the way I'll demonstrate it though, it could be any odd distance. But anyway, let's uh, move along. We'll start the line command. This guy is 35 long. 
Let me go, let me toggle to the uh, zero layer for consistency. And then probably be a little more you know, better housekeeping if the layer was construction. Did I do it right? All right, there we go. Layer zero is current. Click on line. I'll start a frame that is 35 long. The table surface should be 36. You know, that's counter height by the you know, architectural standards manual. Desks, I think, are a little less. I forget if it's 27. Anyway, we'll go 35. One end will make the large end two units. So by the time we mirror this profile, um, the leg will be four inches thick at, at the uh, right under the table surface. So we'll make uh, we'll just we're kind of making the shape of a half a leg now. So I'll go up two units and hit enter. I'll go some distance, I'm guessing about seven or eight is what, it, what I did on the handout. I'll go a little bit, I'll go about nine. Now check it out, I'll acquire this point, slide upward and make it 1.22 in that polar tracking line. So there's the tapered line from two units down to 1.22. DI for distance. Double check. Yes, 1.22 I got. Now we'll put some sort of fancy artwork here, you know, allowing some straight area to, to be the uh, you know, boards around the perimeter of the table. Again, I think I used a diameter of one and five eighths. Uh, enter. Up oh, should be using icons, not type in. We'll set it there right at the bend. Move it further up the leg and move it into the leg as if we're going to mill, mill out this uh, you know section of the wood. Again, well, you, you, you use your artistic talent and I suppose all these circles could be different diameters. I'm going to copy this so that there's a little bit of flat space between the uh, circles. On um, my handout case, I wanted the third one to be exactly, you know, the same. You know, the third one from the second is the exact distance of the second one from the first. So that would be a clever use of the object snaps. Select copy, hit enter. For base point, we'll go to the center of the circle number one. For second point, we'll go to the center of circle number two. Now it's a matter of trimming everything away so we can pee at it join the three arcs that go into the leg and the couple of one, two, three, four straight sections using the trim process. TR enter. As always, still haven't had gotten three lines of the command area yet. 
but uh, it's asking for the cutting edges. Usually you want everything to be a cutting edge. So simply select the select all in the default brackets by hitting enter. Now it says select the stuff to trim. We'll machine gun away. Everything that doesn't look like the table leg. I think my handout has them a bit deeper into the into the leg. That's okay. Finish trimming, hit enter or right click and click enter. Now the, again, this is exactly half of the leg. So we want a mirror with the old 2D mirror command to reflect this half to form the other half. Then we'll p-edit join um, both halves into a single closed polyline. We'll launch the 2D mirror command. No need for the complexity of the 3D mirror. Click the 2D mirror command. Select everything we want to reflect over the center line. And I guess we can select the center line as well because we got to we'll erase one or two either way. Hit enter when the one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, however many, blah, 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 10 objects are found. Hit enter. As we learned uh, in introductory class, Specify the first point of the mirror line. Any two points on this um, center line is are as good as another. I'll click the midpoint. I'll polar track right or left. Click again and answer this question. No, I do not want to erase the source objects. Now before it causes confusion, I'm going to delete the center line here. You know, that way it, there won't be any confusion with the p-edit command when it comes to the three-way intersection here. So I'll select the center line, one or two, however many. Now again, uh, in introductory, we, we uh, converted regular lines and arcs into a polyline by either the join option or the p-edit, edit polyline icon or command, I mean, join command or the edit polyline command. Join might be a step quicker, but I, I think you're ahead if you get real familiar with the p-edit command or the edit polyline command. We'll select it, we'll, spec we'll click any object. Yes, I wanna convert it into a polyline. Again, it's nobody ever answers that no. We'll click the join option of the p-edit command by clicking on the join option in the command area, right click and select the join option or type J enter for the join option. Now it says, what do you wanna join to get, or, uh, select objects you want to join in. Well, we'll select everything. You can't over select. Everything that is joinable will be joined. No harm if you select some stray lines. Hit enter. I got the open option now. So that's a good sign it's closed. I can fatten it up to get the warm and fuzzy. Yep, I'll change the width back down to zero. Those CAD operators generally like to work with razor thin lines. We've succeeded in joining the uh, 20 objects into a single closed line. I'll hit enter to terminate the p-edit command. Okay, it might be handy to go into a 3D perspective now. This is kind of a southeast isometric. Again, rarely do you want a perfect isometric, maybe for printing out. But 
not while you're working. I'll hit escape to get out of the 3D free orbit command. And we will extrude this closed polyline up. My handout says five somewhere. There it is. More than that is, is fine. We'll click extrude. We'll select the closed polyline and I'll extrude it up to say six enter. Get the warm and fuzzy. Top surface is flat. We cookie cut um, this into, into a solid object. Let's copy this guy to get a second one that we can overlay and get the intersection of the two solids. Now one or the other needs to be rotated so these grooves are on the what, what now is top and bottom surfaces. I think you all like this uh, new 3D rotate. I, I prefer the old rotate 3D, but we'll, go, we'll use 3D rotate. Pick one or the other and hit enter. A 3D rotate. It says, hey, uh, where do, how do you, where do you want it to rotate? Any point is, is good, midpoint or end point. End point might be a little bit uh, easier. Up pop the three rings, click the green one. Nope, click the red one. We want to roll at 90 degrees on the floor. So I'll click the red one and turn it gold and type 90. Doesn't matter if it's positive or negative 90. We want to superimpose these two together. Two move procedures with the midpoint object snap. I think we'll uh, get it perfectly centered. There's one move. Still can't guarantee that they're overlapped well enough. So I will don't know that I can O snap. I'll just gently nudge it in the 90 degree direction. Um, spray paint it. This might be a rare use of the continuous orbit. Look at it from all views to make sure that they're uh, well superimposed. Hit escape to bail out a 3D orbit, get back to home plate, so to speak. Go to a slight 3D view. Hey, stop it, I say. Now we'll use the intersect Boolean um, operation. Bool was the mathematician that you know, figured this stuff out. Anyway, we'll uh, click on the intersect lunar eclipse icon or type intersect. AutoCAD says select the objects of which you want to result into the uh, or form into the intersection. You know, click them both, hit enter, and there's our wooden leg. Before we uh, get any further, let's upright this thing so the XY plane is at the feet of the, the, you know, under the table. 
Right now, the table's just dropped on the floor. It's resting on the XY plane. We want to upright it so this end is touching the XY plane. Let's get another uh, isometric-ish orbit or a view. Use the 3D or uh, 3D rotate command to upright it. 3D rotate says select, hey, what do you want to 3D rotate? We'll pick our uh, table leg and hit enter. Specify the base point, O snap anywhere. We want to we want to grab it by the green ring and swing the green ring so that this end comes out of the screen toward us. So I'll select the green ring, turning it gold, and type 90. My experience is a positive angle always swings it toward you. Get the warm and fuzzy again. There we're looking straight down. We've got that perspective view again that I find annoying. So we'll drop down, change it to the parallel view. Now my handout doesn't have a, uh, I should have scrolled the uh, handout pages. Yeah, we completed this bottom bullet here. I didn't specify uh, spacing of the legs or um, overall size of the table top. So, um, you know, it's up to you. I'll copy this guy. Say, uh, I don't know, 36 units. What happened? I accidentally used the move command, copy command, select 36. Now I need four more. Let's make it say 24. Tabletop will be much, a little bit larger. Select them both and copy 24 units. Get the 3D free orbit again. Now this might be a rare case where I appreciate the um, grid. Why does the, oh, I turned on snap. There we go, grid. So now you can almost use the grid like your like your tiled kitchen floor. You know, if we accidentally have legs sticking below the XY plane, it's easy enough to move them up to the move the bottom of the legs up to the XY plane if and when necessary. Everybody with me so far? All right. Now, rather than drawing a, a rectangle, drawing individual boards on the XY plane and O snapping them up, like kind of like we did with the sawhorse exercise, I'm going to draw a polyline from from each from each corner in this four leg assembly all the way around and uh, no I'm sorry I'm gonna um, draw a polyline from corner uh, use O snap tracking on this corner and walk it out three quarters of an inch so the, the board will go from this corner to this corner 
would be exactly three quarters of an inch in the negative y direction. And that'll give me a rectangle up in space that I can extrude up to the uh, where the table top will go. So I'll use the, I guess polyline could be done, but uh, let's use the rectangle command. I'll start my rectangle right at that end point. I'll check it out. I'll acquire that point. And it didn't acquire. There. I've acquired that point. I'll type 0.75 for three quarters of an inch wide. And there is a closed polyline that I can extrude upward. And I thought about having you um, bevel the ends with a 45 degree angle, kind of like we did with the benches of the sandbox. Let's keep it, keep it easy. Hit escape to get out of 3D free orbit. Again, I got a closed polyline since I started it up in space. The lines me. will go parallel to the XY plane. Excuse me, Paul, it's Dan. Yes. Is that a three quarter inch overhang? Negative, zero overhang. Can you put it in the plan view? I can't see what where the lines are going. Okay. Yes, yeah, so it's an overhang. It's beyond the legs by three quarters of an inch. Oh, okay. I, th I thought you meant past the corner into, into this area. No, no, it's an overhang like a roof, so to speak. It's going beyond the wall, so to speak, right? Correct. Thank you. We're going to extrude this into a two by three or two by four or two by you know, five and uh, 0 0.1234, or whatever, uh, whatever the, the length of that straight section is. Let's go to the extrude icon. Select the closed polyline we just made with the rectangle command. Enter. Now check it out. If I O snap at this corner, that board is exactly the, um, you know, it's been ripped to match the flat part of the, at the top of the legs. And you go, and that might be a good idea to. Um, change colors. Again, I think um, the bilayer rule for, um, for colors uh, doesn't apply or applies very much, much less to um, 3D work. We'll copy these. Uh, I'm still on the zero layer. Probably be smart to eventually move everything to the solids layer. We can do that anytime. I'm selecting all four of the legs. Let's assign them uh, color, say, green. Now, I, if I can mirror this guy, if I could find a midpoint between the two legs, I can mirror it and replicate it on the back side of these two legs. You know, this is an object snap. You know, it's, it's easy enough to, you know, you could draw a line from this intersection to that intersection and mirror at the midpoint of that line with the 2D mirror command. But let me show you a shortcut. There's an O snap saying between these two points, 
So I can specify a point right here in space. It'll be transposed down to the XY plane. If I specify the between these two points and click there and there, maybe there, there, and there would be an easier shot because there's not nothing in the background. Check it out. We'll click 2D mirror command. Select objects. I'll select this guy and hit enter. Specify the first point of the mirror. Oh, shift and right click. And where is it? Midway between two points that I'm going to click. So this little shortcut will save me, you know, the second or or half a second it takes to erase a guideline. And I'll say halfway between this and this end, notice it's special, it's oh, going to the XY plane directly under this point. And again, under directly under that point, since we use the 2D command, our mirror line will be on the XY plane. So O oh, snap in the negative in the any another point in the X direction. Da, 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 da. The other two are much the same. We'll just O oh, snap at the corner of this blue board when drawing the rectangle. Same process as we did for this one. Just uh, use this endpoint instead of the endpoint of the green leg. We'll go to uh, rectangle command again. Start it. Make sure you're perfectly at the endpoint of the blue. Uh, um, one by whatever. What happened to my mirror? Oh, I must have skipped that last step of the mirror command. Do you want to erase the source objects? Something went wrong. Always something. Mirror, select that, enter. Shift right click between two points. Erase the source object. No, I'll hit enter. And there that replicated it. Back to the rectangle. Launch the rect hit nothing on the command prompt, nothing selected. We'll click rectangle icon. We'll o snap. On that endpoint, acquire this point, and I can type 0.75, telling AutoCAD I want to be 0.75 in the x direction of that acquired point. 0.75, enter. Got another closed polyline ready to extrude into a solid. Don't forget if you forget, you know, if it's if it's just a bunch of regular lines, you end up with these cattle fence surfaces, which are uh, good for Hollywood, but not not useful for engineering work. We'll launch the extrude command again. I'll select this rectangle I just created and hit enter. And I don't know why it goes so far, but oh snap on this corner. And it's a perfect board, the exact length of the flat spot of the leg. Let's assign this uh, color blue. 
and mirror it. Maybe a midpoint between, yeah, any two midpoints of, of either of these boards would be a good mirror line. Drop down to 2D mirror command, select the board, hit enter, O snap on uh, one of the blue boards, go to another blue board and O snap. The mirror line was directly below those mirror points on the XY plane. And there's our four boards. Ah, I did it again. Always something. Enter. Now the tricky part. I thought I could draw a polyline from each of these sharp corners for the start of the tabletop, offset it four inches out, and then extrude it up three quarters or an inch, whatever you want the tabletop thickness to be. But I found if I uh, draw a rectangle here, for some reason, when I go to offset, AutoCAD won't allow me to select that rectangle. It insists on selecting these guys. Watch it make a liar out of me. We'll draw a rectangle. Now I want to offset this new red now. It looks behaving like it should. Launch the offset command. Select, oh, the offset says specify the distance. Uh, four or five is good. And, uh, after that, we'll radius the corners for safety. We'll say four units offset distance. Here we go, select the object to offset. But now it's letting me select that rectangle. When I was practicing before class, I concluded you, you, you need to move these boards, you know, after developing the polyline, you need to um, move these boards in the negative Z direction, say 10 units. Then you got a clear shot at this polyline after you finish the tabletop, select the four boards, move them in the positive Z direction, 10 units. But it's, uh, let me uh, select the polyline now. Where was I? Offset, uh, five for the offset distance, enter, select the, um, closed polyline made with the rectangle command, one side or the other, let's click here. I got no use for this original. I can leave it. I'm a little afraid it might cause confusion later, so I'm going to erase the original. I want to round each corner by, say, a radius of three. Now, you all know how to use the fillet command and click, click, enter, enter, click, click, enter, enter, get, and you'll do corner by corner by corner, but there's a polyline option of the fillet command that'll round off all four corners in one step. Where's the fillet command? Here's, we'll launch the fillet command. We will set the radius by invoking the radius option to say three and hit enter. Now check it out. I can invoke the polyline option of the fillet command and fill it all four corners by that set radius in one step. Launch the polyline option, select the uh, larger closed polyline. There's our 
there's our paper, you know, poly line for the bottom of our tabletop. Let's extrude that guy upwards, say 0.75, keep things consistent. There's our tabletop. Let's assign it, say, a red color. And before I forget, do I have, yeah, I got the solid layer. Since everything is assigned color specific and not by layer, nothing will be the, be the, you know, be the even though well, the solid layer is blue, but you know, what's red will stay red. Now everything's on the solid layer. Admire our, our work. Don't worry about the fasteners holding the legs to the blue. We've escaped the bailout, change to a spray paint. There's our tabletop. Again, the point of the exercise was uh, the intersect command just to make the, uh, the artsy legs. All right, I kept you a bit old, uh, almost an hour and a half, hour and what, 20 minutes. Let's uh, take a 15 minute break. My uh, computer says it's 5.33. Let's uh, round it. Let's reconvene, say, at 5.45, a little, a little less than 15, about a 12-minute break. And I'll hang by if anybody uh, wants me to go over a step again. Let's see if I can open up that uh, salad fork exercise. Hopefully I still have those files around. Rats. I think it was a year ago. Okay, I think here's one about a year old. Again, I uh, give credit to Dr. Richards of UVA. I took one graduate class because the name of it was Computer Aided Engineering. And he assigned this and uh, I thought it was pretty cool. Draw, draw, draw a, um, you know, the pro, half a half a fork, mirror it over, p edit, join it into a full fork. I think I p edit, or did I? Yeah, I p edit splined. 
this. I use the spline option of the p-edit command to give it curvature. And I also made another, you know, I made a uh, side view of the fork offset, you know, one line into the other and kind of p-edit, you know, use the spline command to give it a little curvature. Now, one or the other needs to be rotated 90 degrees. That would be the next page of that handout. So you got the two solid objects perfectly overlaid after uh, 3D rotating one or the other. Launch the intersect command and it comes up with a fork. Now, this is probably a locked viewport, so I can't spin it around. Three D F O enter. What happened? Only valid. Oh, okay. Double click, get into model space. Three D F O enter. Again, I really can't think of a real life use for the intersect command. Kind of fun for little academic exercises. Anybody got any question? Yeah, uh, the question I have, Paul, I, yes. <laughs> everything was cool, but then right on the, uh, the beginning of the leg and, and everything was cool for me, but how did you get it to rotate 90 degrees? Oh, okay. By one of the legs. Um, let's copy a leg. and. I'll rotate it 90 degrees to plop it on the floor. Actually, depending on, uh, you know, because of the leg is tapered, it, it'll be slightly above the floor, or slightly below the floor. I guess if we rotate it about the midpoint here, half will be above and half will be below the floor. So we'll copy one leg. The 3D rotate command is this, uh, it looks like a little hydrogen atom. So click 3D rotate. AutoCAD says select what you want to rotate, 3D rotate, select the leg, hit enter. Now it says specify the base point at which you want to put the hinge. And it'll, the hinge will be at, be at a point that after specifying the location of the hinge, we will specify which direction the hinge pin goes. Kind of, sort of. So I'll select the midpoint here at the bottom that I know is on the XY plane now. Pick the rotation axis. I want to be able to turn this red ring so the, the leg will flop away and be approximately on the floor. Again, because of the taper, I think it's going to penetrate the floor a little bit, but we won't tell anybody. So let's specify the red ring, and that, that makes the hinge pin go in the uh, red line direction. Click. Now it says specify
let me start over. I think something went wrong. 3D rotate, select it, hit enter. I want the hinge to be there. And we'll select the uh, red ring so the hinge pin aligns with the red line. Specify angle. Now, if my uh, pattern is right, negative 90 will flop it back into the screen. Again, this doesn't follow. I, I have never made connected this uh, command with the right hand rule. So I believe negative 90 will flop it away from me. It did. Let's turn on the grid. I was kind of hoping the grid would uh, slice through it. But, but, uh, did you follow that, Damien? Okay, I see what I did. I, I just used plain rotate. That's what I did wrong. Okay. <laughs> I'm with you. Yeah. Again, there's a rotate 3D command. I think they took away the icon, but uh, with Rotate 3D, instead of getting those three rings as the uh, user interface, you literally specify the first point and the second point of your axis of rotation, kind of like you specify the mirror line, you specify the axis of rotation. The, the, the movement follows the right hand rule. Looks like a lot of it's below the XY plane. And we can move it up to the XY plane easy enough by simply drawing a line on the XY plane and grabbing a inner a O snap and O snapping it to the line we drew on the XY plane. The trick to drawing on the XY plane is you don't follow the Z axis. With the line icon, pick a point. Okay, that's, that's a good direction, but check it out. If I accidentally pick a second point while I'm going up the Z axis, all bets are off. So I can just pick, you know, the easy way is just pick a couple of points that are in random space without any tracking line. Now all three of these endpoints are perfectly on the XY plane, as if I drew them on the floor. Now I can move this leg so that that end point is on one of these. Disregard the fact that weight would possibly pivot it, you know, it would swing. Uh, anyway, now it's the tapered end is slightly off the floor, but the flat section at the top of the leg is perfectly on the floor. Once it's on the floor, feel free to delete your uh, guidelines. All right, I got 545. I think that run that exhausts our um, three pages of handouts. Got you another hour. I don't know if I can keep you entertained that long.
How about let me do one of let me do one of the harder ones. I think this eighty seven is the hardest. And I'll assign you know, some of the uh, a couple of the exercises before eighty seven. Or should I collect eighty seven? Let me show you 87 and, and I, I won't collect it from you because I think there's a lot of steps in here. People, some of you are going to get lost. Um, when I created this handout, I didn't realize the complexity of this thing. But I'm thinking I'll, I'll draw some of the um, top view and nearly all of the front view. And I'll use this top view and fill it all the, the curves and revolve it. Then rotate it 3D and overlap it on the front view. And make cylinders out of the four circles in this keyway hole in the middle that are greater than this 15 inches and then subtract from the revolved surface that I made with the top view and, and flopped in uh, 3D rotate and moved so its center is matches the center of this. Where was I? I'll subtract from that solid the four solids that, that are excessively tall. I'll go into a 3D view. So let's start with, I'll go back to uh, X, you know, plan view straight down the XY plane. Lose the grid. Draw a bunch of, of circles. Okay, one of them is radius, the other. What's the radius? Oh, okay, there's, there's the uh, location for the bolt holes. I don't know why your textbook dimensioned it. No, I'm sorry, Four, there, there's the radius, 14 units from the center of the shaft. Next time I get into this file, I'll lower that dimension. Where was I? Circle, or be specific, circle diameter. We'll start with the biggest circle first, say 38 units. I'll launch the circle center diameter icon again. Hover over the circumference so it'll easily find the middle or the there. Now it, it's lost the midpoint or the center point. Can't, can't home in on it. What do you do? Just rest your cursor over the circumference and then it'll realize you're looking for the center. Okay, 14 for the uh, bolt holes. I think I used the wrong. Uh, okay. I used circle center diameter when I and then typed in the radius. Pick where to go. Okay, I could delete that. Might be a tad quicker just to scale it by a factor of two. Now we're back on track. Two more circles. The uh, shaft with the key, with the woodruff key or whatever key in it has a diameter. No, it has a radius. 
probably not very uh, realistic. I'm going to use the center radius icon, hover over, find the middle, and that is a radius of five. And then the uh, the hub of this flange, I guess you bolt a gear to it or something. What was it? That is 18 units diameter. So find the circle center diameter. Circle center radius is, is on the um, um, panel. Come down to circle center diameter. Hover over the circumference, O snap on the middle, and 18 enter. Now the tricky part. This is really not the way you dimension keyways, but the authors of the of our exercise book were, uh, you know, they. I don't know that they ever set foot in a machine shop. So. couple of times I've, you know, it's out of reach, but I've got a machinist handbook. And the way you should dimension a keyway is from the bottom of the circle to the top of the keyway. And the inspector will put a, I think it's called a snap gauge in there. And then gently pull it out and measure it. And the, the keyway should be dimensioned from the bottom of the circle instead of this way. Anyway, I digress. We'll zoom in. And this way has one unit is the um, vertical uh, line of this keyway. Now notice the verticals are slightly off the center of the circle. So I can't just O snap here at the quadrant and go up one unit and then go each way one and a half to get the three unit width. I kind of got to work backwards. Not a problem. I'll launch line icon, start at the quadrant, go up some distance go over half of the keyway width, which is three. So that'll be go over point one five, enter. Now check it out. There's where the corner of the keyway strikes the circle. Go back up one unit. And erase my uh, erase a cut hit delete. I guess I can delete this guy too. Should be using the AutoCAD, not the delete key. Line there, straight across three, and pull her down to the intersection and hit enter. I think I'm getting into that damn perspective again. I'll trim away the top of the circle. Enter so everything's a cutting edge. Eventually, I need to p edit join this into a um, closed polyline. Might as well do that now while I'm thinking of it. Uh, p edit. Select any part of it, hit enter. Yes, I want to turn it into a polyline. Invoke the join option of the p-edit command. And select everything that's joinable. Hit enter to conclude. Got the word open. Again, fattening it up will 
it'll show you any flaws. I don't know why polylines often show these little joints. They rarely show on paper. So nobody really objects to them. I'll change the width back down to zero again. Hit enter to get out of the P edit command twice. Oh, no once. Now it's a closed polyline. I need to draw a circle here and polar array it or mirror it twice. Again, if I polar array it, I think I need to explode the array before the subtract process. So I'll just mirror it twice. Let's see, these things are two units diameter. So we'll drop down, choose circle center diameter icon. Oh snap at one of the quadrants of the um, bolt hole circle, I guess you'd call it. And what I say, two units. Using the old 2D mirror command, I'll select it, enter, mirror it across quadrant, enter, enter again to invoke the mirror command, select them both and hit enter, specify the center point for the mirror line. I'm taking advantage of Bergner's advice to, to use 45 degree polar tracking instead of 90, you can uh, replicate the top and bottom to form the right and left, enter. This is taking a bit longer than I thought, but that's okay. I'll draw a bunch of guidelines to form to make the top view that I'll um, My goal is to get a half of a top view so I can revolve it. Launch, uh, what the heck, start at the top here. It's four unit offset. Offset, set the offset distance to four and hit enter. Question, Paul? Yes, Dan. Um, Sally, you gotta unmute yourself. Hey, uh, yes. Yeah, step away from the Did you computer mic. I unmuted it. <laughs> okay. Does that help? No, you gotta unmute it. Gosh, I feel like I'm in the twilight zone now. Anyway, what what's your question, Dan? I'm afraid to ask. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Loud, very well. So just stop me in my tracks if if you have a purpose for this, but would it be easier to just extrude these and then union them and then put a little fillet for that radius? Um, good point. The fillet command does work on solids. Um, you know, the fillet command was not included in this week's lesson plan. Um, I don't want to mess you up. I just, I'm just curious. So there is the option, but this, if this is the way that you're training for a purpose, then I get it. I'm going to say yes. This is following the lesson plan. And I really don't know that, okay. that uh, extruding the circles you know, in the cylinders and then filleting it, not sure that would be quicker. I'm almost done. <laughs> All that I have to do is extrude two and then put the fillet on, I'd be done. There's two dimensions, 11 and 15, and then you stick the, the fillet in there and you're done. Now, we'll have you try that fillet. I seem to recall. Uh, okay. Years ago, I, I tried to fill it a, an odd shaped thing that had also, you know, it wasn't just a circle, it was a zigzaggy polygon. And once in a while, it would 
fail to fill it the very last line of that polygon. Okay, so you're uh, you're not sure if it's updated is what it sounds like. Correct. Okay, I'll test it. Thanks. Yeah, let me continue doing using the revolve command. And uh, meanwhile, Dan, you proceed with with uh, the filleting process. And uh, hopefully you're right that uh, it, were, it does exactly what you expect it to. I'm going to offset this guy by four units, enter. And then offset it again by 15. I, I would take an advantage of the midpoints. I quickly got a uh, profile here. Now I. Paul, I think you offsetted the wrong one. You should offset the top line by 15. I knew that. Thank you. Offset, <laughs> offset 15, top one. You're right. The bottom one could have been offset by 11. Top one by 15. I'll switch over to my uh, solids layer. And with polyline, I'll trace over, go into the midpoint. And then C for close. I don't know why the white lines show up instead of the blue lines. That's okay. Launch the fillet command. What's the fillet? It's one unit radius. Invoke the radius option of the fillet command. Type one, enter. And okay, now it's. It insists on um, selecting the, the white lines instead of the blue lines. So I could isolate the layer, or I'll just freeze the zero layer. Where were we? Fill it, radius, one, hit enter. Click, click, enter, click, click, enter, click, click. Launch the revolve icon. Select the profile, enter, specify two points on the axis. Hit enter for 360. Now it doesn't do so much good. Let's uh, thaw the zero layer until I flop it 90 degrees, it's of little use. So I'll launch the 3D rotate command, select my solid, hit enter. I'll O snap at any point. No, I'll O snap on the back of it because I I want the back to be flat on the XY plane. Okay, I'm learning that the for the 3D rotate command to work, you got to be in a 3D view. 3D rotate, select, enter. I want the pivot there. I'll select the red ring, making the hinge of the pivot go on the red line and type negative 90 so it flops away from me. Change the visual style to wireframe and move it so that 
the, the center point will, will match the center point down here. Now here's a trick. I want to get the center of this largest circle here. If I just come in and start uh, picking stuff, there's all sorts of center points. So while my cursor is on the largest circle, I'll type CEN enter, right click and pick, and pick center. So now that uh, I did it. Move of. Let me try that again. Move, select, enter. Oh, what the heck? I can grab it by the quadrant, just line it up with the quadrant down here. There we go. Now I'll extrude the four circles in the closed polyline and subtract them from the revolved solid. We'll extrude, select the four circles and the uh, closed polyline, make them plenty big enough. Um, I believe the bottom of these cylinders are level with the bottom of the flange. But to get the warm and fuzzy, I'll uh, rotate it so I can look right down the XY plane. Things are looking good. Launch the subtract uh, lunar eclipse icon. Select the solid, hit enter. Now it says, what do you want to take away? That would be I'm a little reluctant to crossing window because of these uh, guidelines. I doubt it would matter, but it could be on the safe side. Hit enter. And why did that one not subtract? All right, subtract, select, enter, got it, enter. Spray paint. We got it. Dan, did your way uh, work as, as, as planned? I'm right now making... The radius. Let me undo, undo a little, 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 and um, what was that? I'm gonna do it your way. You know, we're kind of the the other students are kind of lost in suspense here, so. Um, <laughs> All right, we'll extrude that guy. Say again, Dan. It worked. It looks nice. Good. Okay. I had to in um, the outer diameter and the inner one before subtracting the the keyhole. I did it backwards the first time. <laughs> so order of operation is important. Okay, I think I'm following. We'll extrude the big disk by four. Go back to 3D wireframe. Extrude the hub 15. Now I'll extrude the five objects, something greater than 15. It 
subtract the five solids. Let me get a clear shot at, at, at them all. There we go. Subtract, specify the large object that, from which we want to subtract. Whoops, I better union these two together first. Yeah, let me union the two together. The hub and the big flange, enter. Hit the subtract icon, select the union of the two as if they're the casting, and then we're going to drill and machine all these out of the casting. Select all five of these guys. And then all that's left now, as Dan pointed out, we want to uh, put a slight round on the, the sharp corners there and place a concave round on here, probably from the casting process. Launch the fillet command. Set the radius of the fillet command to one. It already is. Hit enter. Now if we're lucky, what happened? There we go. You're right. Worked perfectly. And that probably is a bit faster. All right, I got you another 30 minutes. How about I assign you numbers 86 and on the same CAD file, which one, 68 or 74? 68 has got some complex chamfering. And I don't believe a machinist would, would appreciate. Yeah, let's do 68. We'll deal with the odd chamfering. Okay. By midnight Saturday, hand me a file with your first name and W4 somewhere on the uh, DWG file and the hand in 68 and 86. And I'll do 86 in class with you. I think the, I wish I could zoom in on this. Why? Can I not zoom in? Okay. I can zoom in. The hard thing is this side uses the, how to put it, the top of the chamfer as a datum. So from, from this line, the longer of these two lines, you place this this vertical line 20, replicate it to over here at 72, and then it, then over here. But you see, the, the my point is uh, the the large end of the chamfer is is where the arrows are pointing to on the right side, but the small end of the chamfer is where the arrows point to on the left side. So be prepared. Uh, you know, some of you may be, a, a, you know, just the width of that, I think it's a 102, 2 by 45. Maybe I should show you how to do that. There is a chamfer command. Well, 
let's let's get back to this. And I'll demonstrate my method of doing these uh, two unit by 45 degree typical chamfers. Okay, let me shrink it down here again. We'll go to, what was that? 86. Well, I think when I practiced, I, I did the revolve command. Dan's got a good point. We can make three cylinders, stack them up, make a box to subtract away this screwdriver slot. Yeah, let's just do the disc, the um, cylinders method. Uh, let's see, we can do literally do the cylinder, uh, what are they called, primitive, instead of circle and extruding. Okay, one of them is a, I'll invoke the diameter option of the cylinder command. And say 28 for the uh, smallest. And we want it, oh boy, 48 minus 10 and minus 8. What's that, 30? And then I got that perspective again. believe I can O oh, snap to form the second cylinder in the middle of the top of this cylinder. You know, I was about to make it to the side and literally move it from center, center at the bottom to center at the top. But let's try cylinder starting at the center of the top. And that is a radius of 20. And a height of eight. No. Nope. The diameter should be forty five. So we'll launch cylinder, O oh snap, in the center of the top of the. All right, what happened now? Where was I? Oh, snap there. We want a diameter of 45 and a height of eight. Oh, snap the diameter option. 45 enter for the diameter and a height of eight. Now it brings up the question, if I type eight when my cursor is down here, will it go that direction or will it go up here? Not all commands are consistent. I'm gonna be on the safe side and do both. I'm gonna point up here and as well as type positive eight. And the last one is a radius of 20 and is 10 units thick. Cylinder, O oh snap at the top. Be careful not to O oh snap at the bottom, top. And this is the 20 enter and 10 unit high enter. Now we need to make a block or a box and place it so it'll cut this top cylinder, but not the second cylinder below. 
that block is 10 units wide. And I don't care about the other two dimensions, just so they're big, bigger than the uh, little screw tool thing here, rivet, whatever this is. Let's form a box with the box primitive. Okay, now I want to O snap at the bottom of the top. I believe it's, man, what the heck, I'll make it to the side and move it. Okay, length is in the x direction, that is 10. Width has to be greater than 40, so we'll say 60, enter. And height has to be greater than 10, we'll say 20, enter. Now I'll move this box from its midpoint to this quadrant. Do a 3D rotate to get the warm and fuzzy. Certainly goes through that uh, top cylinder. We'll launch the subtract icon. And from the top cylinder, enter. We'll subtract away the box, enter. Now for good measure, do we should we union the three together? Yes. <laughs> okay. The other option is to assign each a color. But we'll union all three of them together. Enter. Easier done than said. Now, just for my own sake, I'm going to see if I can fill it. All these surfaces that touch the center disk. And see if it continues to be uh, cooperative. What radius should we uh, specify? One. Yeah, one or two. Let's, let's stick with one. Fill it. Radius set to one, it is, hit enter. And I'll, I'll select that guy. Enter fillet radius. I guess I'll hit enter. Select that surface again. Edge has already been picked. All right, we'll select that guy and hit enter. Good. It worked. I'll repeat the process for the other half, uh, half moon. Select the first object. Looks like you got to select. Okay, I'm, I'm used to selecting the edge right away. Select the object, hit enter. Now select the two edges and hit enter. What happened there? Let's see if I can fill it to a zero radius. Fill it, radius, zero, enter. Select first object. One, enter. Select edge and hopefully it'll be sharp. Cannot blend this edge.
Well, undo, fill it, select the object. I don't know why it's asking me for the radius again. Select the two edges. Now, why did it select? Why did it fill it at the top? Because I picked the object at the top. Fill it. Yes, Paul, it's Dan. I think you're only supposed to pick the edge and try to avoid the faces. Okay. All right, I'm going to have to practice that a little more to get it down to a two step dance routine. All right, 15 minutes. Let me uh, start at least get underway with 68. Go back to the uh, plan view, turn off the blankety blank in perspective. I suppose this could be done with uh, cylinders and uh, the chamfer command. Let me do the revolve process for this. Uh, let's see, We're, we'll go back to the zero layer for the guidelines. Line will start 72 long. I'm going to draw another line on the left side. Let's say eight. And on the right side, 20. And then back 10, which is to the midpoint. All right. Now the left side. I'll draw half the diameter downward, so 15 units downward. Since the left side measured from the finish end of the rod, we're going to machine away to draw the to make the chamfer. On the right side, you got to add metal to the rod to make the chamfer. Now. Uh, there is a chamfer command. Uh, let me show you my way. It's probably a few dance steps longer, but so we'll draw a uh, two radius circle. Draw a line from intersection to intersection, and quadrant to quadrant. And we'll erase and trim away the garbage. We got to do a little bit of choking down. Well, we got several steps here. All right, let's move this down from 15 to 11. So I believe we want to move it down four.
Well, let me move it. Let me work off the center line. It's eight units down. Move, select them both. From there, require. Date. Not going to work. DI for distance. Here it says seven. What went wrong? It's okay. I'll move it up one. We can draw a line from, from that end point to there, and from there down, and erase the garbage. Now we, from this, we need to add the chamfer. Let's offset this line two units to the right and draw a 45 degree angle right there. Offset, set the distance of the offset command to two, enter. Pick there, click there. There, we need to fill it this. to three unit radius, radius three, enter, click, click. Trim away the garbage. We can't go end, 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 end because of this fillet here. So we gotta use, use the p-edit command. So to get a clear shot, I'll need to Trim away just a little bit more. And for good measure, I'll erase this guy for fear that the P edit join process will come to this three way intersection and make a wrong turn. So I'll delete that. Uh, trim, enter, shave that guy away. Everything in order. Revolve. Oh, I need to p-edit join. Edit polyline. Select any, any part of it. Yes, I want to convert it into a polyline. Invoke the join option. Window everything. Hit enter. It's got open. It's good measure. I'll fatten it up. Yep, looks good there. Drop it back down. Now I can use the revolve command. Which layer am I on? Let's go to the solid layer so the, so the resulting revolve solid will be on the solid layer. Click Revolve, select, enter, two points on the bottom line there, and enter to accept the suggested default of 360. Now maybe for good measure, let's I'll place some dimensions. That would be best if I go back to the uh, drafting and annotation workspace. I'll have to create a style from there to there should be eight. It is. 
Enter again from there to there should be 72. I won't expect you to dimension yours. Enter again from there to the top of the chamfer. Oh, snap at the end of the arrowhead. Make it look neat. And that's correct. And Well, something went wrong. That should be 16 and that should be 22. Wonder if the whole thing is off. No, it's right on the left end. Not a problem. I'll just erase the solid. Ah! R E to regen. What happened to all my zero length stuff or zero layer stuff? All right, we'll uh, repair this guy. Oh, wait a minute. I'm, okay, I don't know what I'm thinking here. That, 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 that is dimensioned correctly. The, the top of the chamfer should be 16. And the 22 should be you know, the top of the conical surface here. So let's dimension from the quadrant there to the quadrant down here. Okay, that's correct. A good measure and uh, fill up my, uh, my uh, quota for time. I'm gonna create a new dimension style We'll call it, say, 68. And we want it much bigger, maybe uh, six, I guess. Click OK, click Set Current, click Close, select them all. And then move them to the 68, I almost said layer, to the 68 dim style. We don't want four digits precision, so we'll modify the 68 dim style down to no decimals, or better yet, Another way, probably a better way, would be to truncate the trailing. That way, if something is a hair off of the round number, it'll show rather than rounding it off. Set current for good from force of habit, I guess. Click close. Let's go back to top view and zoom in. Let's lose the uh, spray paint. All right, this is a bit overkill, but let's create a leader here. I'm kind of weak on this 
leader stuff, so bear with me. We'll go MID enter. Won't O snap there. All right, be that way. I'll draw a line from there to there. O snap to its center point. I'll type two. Now this comes up to the question of where, how many blank spaces should there be? I don't believe there should be any between the two and the X. 45% percent, percent D. Percent percent D has always formed the, the um, degree symbol. <clears throat> Hit enter, put TYP. Close. It looks like I got a formal leader style now, don't I? Create a new 68 leader style. It's interesting where. Okay, leaders are, leader styles are created differently than dimension styles. I better punt. You know, a workaround would be to explode this and, and jury rig it. Don't tell anybody. Change the text height of the subloaded text to say uh, 80. Undo. Okay, how tall is this? DI. Can't believe I'm jury rigging this so much. 1.1 unit. We'll change the height to 1.1 unit. I was thinking of uh, overall scale of. We'll change this to the middle center. We'll put them a little bit closer together. Say a 0.85 text. And how big should I magnify this arrowhead? Four times? Scale, arrowhead, enter, four. And maybe a little bit more. Say 1.2. All right, past my uh, 645. Thanks, Paul. That was awesome. <laughs> okay. That was good. Thank Have you. A good All right, well, anybody got any last questions or uh, comments? Or I think uh, you can follow. Um, did I email you these finished? I think I did. You know, replicate the um, the handout I got. Oh, I'll just want you to make the solid. You don't need to make the dimensions, and you can leave or delete the two um, D view. So follow sixty eight again, just the solid. And what was the other one? Eighty-six. Sixty-eight and eighty-six, just reverse the numbers. <laughs> okay. And again, uh, three cylinders and a box is all it took to do that without me without using the revolve command. All right. 
let's call it a call it a class. Turn them in by the either through the classroom or by email to my Yahoo account. A little reminder: the uh, Newport News Public School assigned email addresses are falling out of style. We can't trust them. They, they may last forever, but uh, they might just turn them off tomorrow. So. Last call for questions. So Thank 68 you. and 86 are the homework assignments. Correct. All same, right. That's it. Same file. And put your uh, name and uh, WK4 somewhere so that I can see it. Okay. See you next Tuesday. We gone. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. Mm -hmm.